The next stage of the operation is to clean up the edges of the components. Here we've got the two components, a stainless steel version and a brass version. Even though they feel quite smooth, they're still not good enough as a presentation edge at the moment. And also what we've got to do is remove the holding tags which we use to locate the parts within the, the, the flat sheet. Uh, the way we do this was with a, a needle file which has got a very fine cut on it and we put the parts in the compo into the, the vise and draw file them to smooth out and clear away the little tag. Right, to do this, we mount the, the part in the vise. Remember that there's got to be the soft jaws for the vise so we don't damage the component. And we take the needle file. Now the technique for this is you must keep your, the file square to the, to the axis of the, of the component and you draw down the component. Where it comes to the little tag, you might have to work just a little bit harder and you might see there it's smoothing it out. It doesn't take a lot of work and the thing is don't be too aggressive. Just gently work it away and clean it up. This gives a nice smooth polished finish. Try and keep the needle file square to the work. However, when we get to some of the other components, you might find it an advantage just to twist it a little bit as it's going over the notches just to stop it digging in. There is other tools and techniques to try and speed up this process. It all depends on what you've got in your garage and what sort of tools you already possess. This is a fairly easy process. And quite therapeutic actually. And we're almost there. The stainless steel is exactly the same. You probably find that the stainless steel is a little smoother to start off with than the brass, just because of the way it reacts to the laser cutting process. But it is a little bit harder to, to draw file off. So the work content's about the same. For some of the components, particularly the fuselage parts, where there's a lot of notches, if you keep the needle file totally square to the work, you might find that it'll want to just get caught up on some of the notches. So a little tip here is still keep it square that way, but just put a little tilt onto it and you'll find it, it'll ride over the, the notches that little bit easier. But the process is still the same, essentially. There we go. And just work your way all the way around. And the next thing we do the effect of draw foiling actually produces a little burr. It's actually pushing the metal over and you might find it's closed the notch up a little bit and made it a little bit too tight for the notch to go in. That is too tight. It needs to be an easier fit than that, particularly when you, if you're going to use a lacquered finish. Now what you do, again, you use the needle file, which is the right size, and you just a few licks either side just to remove that bar and just to clean out any bit of rubbish that's in there and that's a nice easy fit. One thing to be aware of on the, the wing components you'll find that one of the notches on the bottom edge of the, of the part is bigger than all the rest. Don't worry about that. The rest of them is a nice easy fit. That one looks slack but when it's actually fitted together, the stringer goes at an angle, so it's supposed to be that, that bit bigger. Once you've completed the, the draw filing method with the needle file, it takes it to a, a smoother finish. But another method of actually going to the next stage, if you get some of the wet and dry that's applied in the kit, and glue it to a wooden block, so it's nice and flat, and then you can repeat the process using the wet and dry, and it just takes it to a more polished state.
for those of people that we mentioned earlier that have got extra tools in, in the, the, their garage and in their workshop, if you've got like a, neat, uh, a larger file, as long as it's a fine cut on it, you can make the, the needle file process a lot faster, particularly on the, the larger components such as the main stem and the wings, just to take some of the time out. If you don't have them, it doesn't matter. The needle file and the wet and dry works perfectly well. For doing the internal uh, curved surfaces, process is exactly the same. Get the needle file and just gently rock the way around and keep your eye on the scratches and just so they actually smooth out and go in line with the component. When you want to go to the next stage and polish up, a good method of doing it is just get some of the wet and dry that's supplied, roll it around a pencil or a bit of wood and you've got something there that can do the polishing to get it to a nice shine. If you've got uh, some extra tools in your in your workshop, like the Dremel tool with a small sanding head, very fast. The only word of caution when using this like this type of uh, bit of kit, it can be too fast and you can remove far too much metal. So be very, very careful. And that's about as much as required because it's a nice smooth finish now. Another alternative to the multi-tool is the carrel sander which you mount in a pillar drill and you can actually put the fine wet and dry uh, paper that's supplied and again it'll rotate and leave it a nice smooth finish if you've got that. If not go back to the pencil method. Well once all the edges have been cleaned and polished what you'll find that the draw file process and the polishing process will have produced a small burr along the edge which will be able to feel your finger. The way to remove that, just get the needle file and just pull it along and just clean it off, just very gently. And again, just go around, get a little small bit of test piece that you've got. Don't use a long length for the testing to keep it away from your eyes. And just go around and check that everything's a nice fit. And you can't, I can't stress enough that you can't do too many dry fits to make sure that none of the notches have been missed. Right, where we're at next, what we've got to do is start cleaning up the face of the, of the work. Now what we do is a sheet of wet and dry supplied with the kit. And the easiest method for this is just tearing off a small section and rubbing it by hand. This is just an anti-slip mat that you can get in any sort of DIY stores just to provide a, a non-slip grip on your table. Again, and it's just moving it in a regular mat manner. And it polishes up very quickly the, the brass. I don't know how well you can pick that up on a camera. You can see it's fairly, fairly, fairly rapid. The only downside with this method, doing it by hand, there is a tendency to do it in an arc. And the end parts, it's fine in the middle, the end parts are more difficult. So to combat that, we'll go on to the wooden block. And you just continue and just keep that a nice even square pressure until it's stressed off. Now it's up to the individual what type of finish they want. That leaves, with the 600 grit that's applied with the kit, that'll leave a sort of brushed finish, which means there's still a certain amount of scratches, but if you keep them nice and even and regular, it's still a finish. It, just because it's brass, it doesn't mean to say that it has to be a, a mirror finish. So it's up to the in individual to say, say stop. Uh, what you can do, you can work your way up the grits if you want to a higher grit than a 600 
right the way up to this crocus paper, which is a jeweler's, which is a very, very smooth. It's really up to the individual of when they say that's enough. But what I would uh, suggest, if you are working on the grits to get it finer and finer grits, do all of the components at the same level so you can judge your time much better. And by that I mean don't spend hours and hours on one component and sicking yourself off for the rest. Keep it all balanced so you know when right, that's enough. Move on to the next. Another method of using the wet and dry that's applied if you're not comfortable with the wooden block method is just holding the component onto the, the wet and dry and pushing it down onto the table. Just a gentle, even pressure and I'll just gradually clean up the full working surface. And it'll keep it nice and screwy. You just have to work it till it's all nicely polished.